So we'll start with a little bit of mindfulness and, and breathing. So we come onto the back and a very simple, tried and true uh, technique for mindfulness is just following the breath. So let's just start there today. We lay back and again, I find personally, some days that can be very easy and enjoyable and pleasant. And then other days it feels like I'm being asked to do the impossible. <laughs> My mind insists that there's other things that are more important. There are other things I need to focus on. Or sometimes it's my emotions, my heart, right? I feel like there is this overwhelming feeling. And no matter how hard I try to shut that out, to focus on other things, I just can't. So I mentioned this to hopefully uh, let you know if you're experiencing that. That is not abnormal. That is something I think everybody experiences from time to time. But what I'd like to uh, educate you about is that doesn't change the value of what we're doing. Just because I'm struggling with what I'm being asked to do at the moment doesn't mean I should quit. And this is a, a thing that many I meet people all the time. I can't meditate. What they're saying is meditation is difficult for me, and so I'm going to quit. Right, that their thinking is anything that's difficult, that must just not be for me. I'm not getting any benefit. I'm struggling, so I must not be getting a benefit from this. Very often, especially when it comes to yoga, the opposite is true. In a sense, if you never struggle with anything in yoga, then you may not actually be getting as much as you can from your yoga practice. You might want to look for a different teacher or a different Thing where there's a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a struggle, you know, it's a little difficult. So as crazy as it sounds, just sitting, relaxing, breathing can be a struggle for some people, and that might be you. Very often that means you're getting perhaps more benefit than someone who finds it easy. There's a lot of value in noticing whether it is difficult or easy for you, okay? So even just noticing, huh, it's a real struggle today. That is what we call mindfulness. Now from there, we're going to begin to deepen our breathing. So on the inhale, we fill the belly, the ribs, the upper chest. As we exhale, we reverse that. Now, I'll invite you to notice if even just changing the breathing has shifted anything for you, right? Maybe it felt really easy at first, and now as you begin to deep breathe deeper, you find that there's a little more of a struggle. Or perhaps it was, uh, it was a struggle, and then as you begin to breathe more deeply, you find yourself sort of relaxing into it. Now we'll add the ujjayi sound, which is like fogging a mirror with your mouth closed. And we'll begin to warm up the legs. So we bring in the right leg, we continue with the breathing. And we are just gently opening up that hip and the leg, waking it up with some gentle movement. You don't need to do anything too extreme at this stage or this point. These are our initial, um, just gentle explorations into moving the body. So how does it feel? And we'll do two stretches here today. So the first one is adductors, so dropping the knee to the right. You might feel a stretch and the adductors are ready. If not, you can take the legs straight 
And for many people, that'll create a more powerful stretch. The left leg could be straight or you could place that foot on the ground. And as I think most of you have heard me say in the past, the breath combined with the stretching and the mental focus on the stretch, that's the magic formula. Okay, second stretch. So this is for the inside of the thigh, that's liver channel. Second stretch is for the gallbladder, the partner channel, if you will. So figure four, we cross the ankle over the knee and then we pull this leg in and we'd like to feel the stretch here in the glutes and that's gallbladder channel, okay? So again, these two channels in Chinese medicine essentially almost function as one. So what we do to one affects the other. And they both can be um, hyper, you know, active or hypo, which means underactive. And so again, health occurs in the system when there's neither too much activity nor too little. And there is a dynamic balance between the two. Okay, let's release that uh, first side. And again, I'd like you to pause for a moment and just mindfully notice if you can feel a difference. And hopefully you can sense that if you didn't know anything about blood or lymph or cells or biology, you might just describe what you're feeling as an energetic difference. It's not emotional. It's not like my right leg is emotional, my left leg isn't. The right leg just feels kind of tingly. Uh, you know, it feels more vibrant. And again, that's what the Taoists and the yogis called prana or chi. The en there's an energetic imbalance that's perceived. We can actually feel it. All right, side two. So I like to point that out for people because I think when people read the ancient texts, they hear about prana and chi. As a Westerner, there's a, a um, perhaps a tendency to just dismiss these concepts as like folklore or superstition or unscientific. But if we think of it just as terms of our perception, so yogis weren't using microscopes and uh, scanners and all this stuff, they just had their perception. And so using our own perception, we can see, oh, yeah, I feel a difference. There's a change there, right? That's what they were talking about, that change. All right, let's go ahead and drop this leg out to the left. So the beautiful thing is we can do these exercises. We can actually perceive the change, right? And we don't need a microscope. We don't need a a scanner, we don't need to do a biopsy, uh, we can just perceive the change ourselves and that the change seems to be moving us in the right direction, right? So we, we like that feeling of vibrancy, or hopefully you do, that sense of vibrancy, that sense of aliveness, that sense of openness. Um, and so again, there can be a short-term effect directly after the class, but then some of the effects, again, are going to be longer term. Let's switch stretches. So we do the figure four. And so those are going to be effects that are compounded over, uh, you know, weeks, months, years, or even decades of yoga practice. Okay, let's go ahead and release that side. Take a moment, hopefully the two sides now feel much more balanced. Let's bring both legs in and we'll rock and roll up to seated and uh, transition into a tabletop. 
This is just a quick warm up for the spine and the back. So cat cow, inhale, head and tailbone lift, exhale, tuck, head and tailbone. And when you're finished with that, you can tuck those toes and work on the legs. Okay. From there, we come into our full down dog. And with our next exhale, we walk our feet to the hands. And we can take a moment in the rag doll. I find this is a great way to assess the health um, of my back. So how strong my back is feeling on that particular day. Today, I'd say it's about average. It's not particularly great, but it's also not particularly painful. With the next inhale, we'll roll on up to standing. And now we embark on a slightly more vigorous part of our warm up, which is the sun salutation. Um, so feet can touch or be hip distance. On the inhale, we draw the arms up and we try and stretch from the pubic bone through the chin. And a great thing to visualize here is imagine a beach ball and you're going up and over the beach ball. Okay, let's inhale back through center and we will exhale to a forward fold. See if you can get your palms flat. You might need to bend your knees a bit. Let your neck relax. And then with the inhale, we'll come to fingertips or take hands to shins and lengthen out the spine. That's the half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And as we exhale, let's plant the hands and we'll step our right foot and then our left foot to the top of a push-up. Okay, so uh, as I think you all know, we want those shoulders active and we want everything essentially lined up ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels. So very common mistake, you wanna check yourself for this, looks kinda of like that. If I exaggerate it, it's almost like I'm going into down dog, but even if my hips, do you see how my hips are raised up? They don't align. If I drew a straight line from my shoulders to my heels, they wouldn't intersect my hips. So I want my hips intersecting those two points. I also don't want it down here. But much more common is this, because what people are actually doing when they do this is they're trying to escape engaging their core. Okay, so let's drop those hips down. And if you need to, just drop your knees, okay? Okay, let's all drop our knees and we'll exhale and come down about halfway and take a breath here. Elbows hug the ribs. And then with the next exhale, we'll come all the way down. Let's bring our feet together and gently press them into the top of the mat. And as we inhale, we'll lift the hands, head, neck, and chest. And what this does is it just engages our back. One thing I see in person again is people lift their feet up. Just keep pressing those feet into the mat gently as you lift up. Okay, so we're just using the back muscles here. This is very difficult for many people because of weakness in the back muscles. So this is a great way to counteract that, to begin strengthening those muscles. But exhale, come on down. As we inhale, we'll come to first tabletop and then to the downward facing dog.
All right, beautiful. So let's do another one. We'll inhale to the toes and we exhale to the front edge of the mat. Inhale to the standing back bend. And then today's class again emphasizes side bends. So let's explore that now, our first side bend. We'll grab the right wrist. I'm going to mirror you here. And we send the hips to the right as we pull the arm to the left. So um, rather than thinking how far down can I go, think about how much length I am creating. So again, we are trying to actually lengthen these muscles in here. This again will be the gallbladder channel. And we're trying to stimulate that through a nice uh, big stretch. Try looking up here. So um, I don't know if you can see me, but if I look down, my shoulder starts to follow my gaze. So I bring, I look up and that brings my shoulder back and helps keep it stacked above the other. Okay, inhale, let's come back to center. We'll grab the opposite wrist and we exhale the other side. So again, one thing I want to educate you about as a yoga practitioner is some yoga poses are more about strengthening, others are more about stretching, some are a mix. This is primarily a stretch. And it's primarily stretching this out. Sure, some muscles are engaged. There's maybe a little bit of balance involved here. Um, but it's not really why this I would choose to teach this pose. Not teaching it because I'm trying to challenge your balance. Not teaching it because I'm trying to make you a lot stronger. This is mostly about, let's stretch this area out. Okay, inhale, let's come back to center. We exhale to our forward fold. Let's inhale to a half lift. And as we exhale, this time let's take the left foot and then the right to the top. The push up. Okay, so everything's stacked up here. Now again, knees up or down from the, here on is your choice, but we just wanna maintain good upper body form. So one thing I see again, which would be bad, would look like this. I bend my arms a little bit and then I just sort of drop into a back bend. Again, that's indicative of weak shoulders and arms. And the solution is drop the knees, and, but bend those arms. That's how they're going to get stronger, is using them. Whereas this, where I just bend a tiny bit and then drop down, I'm not actually using the muscles of my arms. Therefore, they will not get stronger. So let's take a deep breath. We exhale halfway down. We'll take another breath. And then exhale all the way down, okay? And then this time, inhale. Press into the hands, and I lift up as much as possible without lifting my pelvis. So there are three points in the pelvis I want you to be aware of. The two hip points, so the front of your hips, they kind of jut out. And then your pubic bone, it also kind of juts out. So let's try and keep those points on the ground, but use our arms to push ourselves up as much as possible. And what that does is it isolates the spine. Good, exhale, come on down. And if you're able to, inhale, top of your push-up, and then exhale back to downward dog. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel a flush of heat after doing that last back bend, okay? And so again, energy, right? You know, I'm sure we could explain it physiologically, right? Oh, you're doing this, to open your capillaries, the blood flow, blah, blah, blah. Great, I'm not saying that's wrong. But what I'm saying is if you didn't have all that knowledge and understanding, you might describe it in terms of energy, right? All that moved energy, it created heat. I'm sweating now, okay? So again, the yogis weren't crazy. They weren't just making stuff up for no reason. They were very observant of these states within us. All right, let's do one more. Inhale, toes, exhale, front edge of the mat. <laughs> Inhale, standing back, bend up and back. Exhale, stretch your right side. Inhale, center. Exhale, stretch your left. Inhale, center, and then exhale again into a strength posture, okay? If any of you feel a big stretch here, let me know, because you're probably doing it wrong. 
You might feel a little in your shoulders, but it's not an effective stretch for opening the shoulders. Okay, so th that's what I would like you to understand. There are effective and ineffective stretches. So am I going to create a lot of flexi uh, shoulder flexibility doing this? No, you won't. Will I create strength doing this? Yes, you will, both in your shoulders and in your legs. And that tends to be what creates the intensity for a posture like this. Okay, inhale, we come all the way up and back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, and exhale, bottom of the push-up, low plank, make your way back to downward dog. <laughs> All right, at this point, hopefully we're feeling nice and warmed up, and we'll begin taking things a little bit deeper. So feet touch, we inhale right leg up and back, and we'll exhale that knee to the ground, and inhale, into this first variation of a modified side plank, okay? And again, what I want with a side plank is this side, my uh, right side is long. I'm not rounding or collapsing. Instead, I'm lengthening there. This right shoulder engaged. So I am actively pressing. I don't know if you can see me, but this is collapsed and this is engaged. Collapsed, engaged. So collapsed is dangerous for this joint and engaged protects the joint and it strengthens these muscles. Again, I'm looking up because I want that shoulder back. The chest is open. The hands are in a six o'clock position, okay? Now, if you're like, that's really easy, Doug. I'd like more than just inhale, lift, this top leg, and you can do reps. You inhale, lift, and exhale down. You could also just keep it lifted up, which will create static strength. Moving will create dynamic strength, and we need both. So if we had time, we'd do both of them, uh, you know, different sets, whatnot, but we only have an hour, so your choice. Which one would you like to emphasize? Okay. Let's exhale that hand down. We inhale, right leg up and back. Let's exhale and lunge. We'll inhale up into a warrior two, which is the pose I mentioned right at the beginning of the class. So front foot and knee, point ahead, straight ahead. Right thigh, the closer it gets to parallel with the knee over the heel, the harder it's working, generally speaking, okay? My arms, I'm reaching them out like I'm trying to touch both walls. And my gaze is over the front fingertips. That's your drishti. Okay, so again, this is strength posture. Um, third chakra, will, that's definitely going to come up in a posture like this. So again, this is sort of weak third chakra, right? I can't, no, I can't do it. I'm too tired. Uh, it's too much, right? Versus... Again, mentally, inwardly saying, you know what, my arms are burning. I'm just going to keep them up. I'll be okay, right? I can breathe through this. Okay, let's do a little flow here. So we inhale up to this transition. We call that stupa. And we exhale to warrior two at the back of the mat. And then inhale up. Generally, this is going to be easier to flow, right? Though it's holding it very often that creates that adversity or that challenge there. Okay, this time as we come up, we'll exhale into the goddess. So in goddess, I want my toes and knees pointing out, pretty much out to the sides as far as they will go. Again, the closer my thighs come to parallel, the harder uh, my thighs and my glutes are gonna work. And I want those knees over the heels. And then the arms are just basically mirroring the legs, you know, sort of like a symmetry there. But again, the arms are getting some work here. The shoulders are getting some work. Now, what I'd like to do is cultivate a smooth, deep, relaxed breath to counteract the sympathetic response, right? That would naturally come up here. Okay, let's inhale, we come on up and exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up. You'll see me moving 
side to side in the mat today, uh, and that's just so I can continue facing the camera there, depending on the posture, okay? Okay, side two. Feet touch, inhale, left leg. Exhale, knee to the ground, and inhale to a modified side plank. Now again, you have some, uh, you wanna check this waist, the chest and belly, shoulders, gaze, right? And then once you feel like that's good, leg down, the easiest choice, right? Um, so if you're feeling challenged here, then <coughs> keep that foot down. If it's a little too easy, you might lift that leg up. Okay, and again, this will have a certain kind of challenge to it. And then also you can do reps, which will create a different kind of muscular challenge. So a great way of thinking of it is you have two kinds of muscle tissue. One kind likes to move. The other kind likes to be still. And depending on whether you're keeping your legs still or moving it, you're going to target one or the other, okay? More. Okay, let's exhale that hand down. Inhale the leg up and back. We exhale lunge and we inhale to a warrior two. So again, let's check that alignment. You know, make sure this back foot is firmly planted, that leg is straight. The toes point straight out to the side or angle slightly in. Again, we're reaching those arms out. We're breathing deep, rhythmic, and slow. And if you're doing it right, you're beginning to feel, uh, yeah, uh, a bit irritated or a bit tired or whatever it is. Again, third chakra, we're talking about irritation, anger, frustration, all those kinds of things. So when we meet it on the mat, we're better at dealing with it in our life, right? This is our little laboratory. This is where we get to practice dealing with these inner energies. And then when, you know, our boss is yelling at us or our partner or our kids aren't listening, we've already encountered uh, dealing with these things in the yoga class. Okay, so inhale, we come on up and exhale, warrior two at the back of the mat. And we just flow side to side a few times. And again, this has a different kind of benefit, right? We call dynamic stretching versus static stretching. Okay, from there, let's again explore our goddess pose. So we drop down into it second time around. So again, you might find yourself getting tired more quickly. Use your inhale to counterbalance tiredness. So think of the inhale as power, energy, strength. And then use your exhale to counterbalance like agitation, irritability, um, you know, uh, a sense of overwhelm. So the exhale really helps with that. Like I'm, I wanna stay calm, right? So am I feeling weak? Am I feeling overstimulated? you would choose either the inhale or the exhale to count, counterbalance that. Okay, inhale, let's come on up, and we exhale and cartwheel down bottom of the push-up. Okay, so that was the goddess pose. Okay, from our down dog, let's inhale to the toes, we exhale to the front edge of the mat. Let's do a little bit of balance here. So inhale up, and as you exhale, take a chair pose, and then just sweep your right elbow under your left. So again, I'm gonna mirror you here. All right, and this is uh, eagle arms. And then try and keep your knees bent and inhale the right leg over the left. Now, you can put your toes on the ground if you have trouble with balance. Um, but if you can, you wanna wrap those toes all the way around, okay? So we square off those hips and then we drop them down and you wanna bring your elbows toward your knees, but not by doing this. So I see this a lot. Now there, there might be something to this that I don't know, but I, don't, I can't find any benefit to doing that, okay? Versus staying up and pulling the elbows down like that, there's a compression that's created 
in the under the arms that actually stimulates the lymphatic system. So there's a clear benefit here. I don't really see the benefit in bending over. Uh, if you know something I don't know, let me know, but um, no one's explained that to me and I can't figure one out myself, okay? So this is the eagle pose. Let's do the other side. Let's inhale back up, deep breath in. We exhale, take our chair, and then left under right, and then inhale left over right. Okay, and then again, I want to square off and then sink down, and you should feel compression in your legs, right? It's like the muscles are being pushed together, and then also under those arms, and the arms there, bringing those elbows down. There's some other arm stretches that can be done here, but let's just focus on this one today. Good. Inhale, we come all the way up and back. Deep breath in, exhale, forward fold, and make your way back to downward dog. All right, great work, everybody. So let's take things a little further. We'll do another kind of side plank. So this time, feet touch, inhale, right leg, Exhale that foot about halfway up the mat, and then roll onto the edge of your left foot. And upper body is the same. So we stack those shoulders, we're looking up, chest is open, left side is long, but you can feel there's more work now in the shoulder, in the core, right? So now we're beginning to strengthen these core muscles. If it's too much, what do you do? You drop back, okay? So you just come back here. If you're like, oh, my shoulder is wobbly, I feel like I'm going to hurt myself. All right, from here, again, I can add some challenge by exhaling hips down and inhale lift up. And what I'm doing now is I'm beginning to both strengthen and stretch uh, the muscles there in the sides. Now again, the static one will still strengthen those muscles, but it won't stretch them. So this is kind of like a double, <laughs> a double whammy, if you will, double benefit. Okay, let's exhale the hand down. We'll inhale the right leg up and back. Exhale, lunge. Let's inhale to our warrior two. Take a breath. And with the next inhale, we come up to stupa and let's add goddess. So we exhale, goddess, drop down, inhale up stupa, and exhale to warrior two. Good, let's repeat that. Inhale up, we exhale to goddess, inhale up, and exhale to warrior two. Now, this time, inhale, straighten the front knee, pivot your hands and lengthen your right waist, and then pivot your arms into extended triangle. So I often teach this with plank because many of the principles are the same. I want that right waist long, I want the chest and belly open, right? I want to stack those arms in six o'clock position, I want my gaze up. So the upper body is almost identical. The only thing is I'm not bearing weight on this arm anymore, right? Even if you have it on a block, you're not pushing into that block, right? Breath is deep, rhythmic, slow. Where do you feel the stretch? Because this is a stretch, you should feel one. If you don't, you may not be far enough. You might need to sink a little deeper into it. Good. From there, let's inhale up, warrior two, exhale, cartwheel down bottom of the push-up. All right. So side two, feet touch, inhale left leg, and then exhale that foot halfway, and then inhale stacking everything up, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and turn so I can face you. All right, and then again, if I want a little more, exhale, sweep down, inhale, lift up. I, I really maybe even shouldn't say more. 
it's just a little different. You're getting more in the sense that you are adding a stretch, whereas the static version isn't really going to give you that. I just recommend five or so, right? You don't have to knock yourself out. I want you to breathe deeply and slowly, and I want you to move mindfully, okay? Good. From there, we can exhale that hand down. Inhale the leg up and back. We exhale and lunge. And we inhale to our warrior two. Good. Let's take a breath. And then we inhale up to stupa. And we add goddess. So we exhale down to our goddess. Inhale back up. Exhale, warrior two. Right? It's pretty simple still. Inhale up. And exhale, goddess. Inhale up and warrior two. Then this time inhale, straighten, pivot, and exhale, extended triangle pose. So your left hand can be on your leg. It could be on the ground. It could be on a block. Again, things I see in person that I'd like you to be aware of if you're doing it is collapsing. Okay, do you see how my uh, left waist is collapsed? Another one looks like this, the shoulder coming forward, right? Another one looks like this. I'm bringing my chest forward. A lot of these are because the individual is trying to touch the ground, and they shouldn't. <laughs> they either have shorter arms or longer legs, or they lack some in the flexibility department, and they just shouldn't. They're making a poor choice because they're collapsing their, their power plant. In yoga, your power plant is your lungs, okay? Your diaphragm, your lungs. So we don't really want to do, uh, in many postures, we don't want to do things that are going to constrict that, and that's exactly what you're doing there, okay? All right, let's inhale up, warrior two, and exhale, cartwheel down. So again, what might seem important to a novice, oh, is my hand on the ground or not, actually isn't important when we're when we really understand what's going on with these postures okay so please make wise choices in you know what are you doing what are you emphasizing emphasize the breath lung capacity emphasize a good stretch don't worry about is your hand touching the ground okay okay from here inhale to your toes exhale front edge of the mat let's inhale up to standing and then exhale, we'll bring our arms out like wings, we bend both knees, and then we inhale the right ankle over the left thigh. So this is one we do quite a bit in my classes. This is the um, balancing pigeon pose. So we're essentially getting a glute stretch here in the right buttocks, um, and we're doing it while balancing on one leg. The more your hips drop and the more your chest comes toward your shin bone, the deeper that stretch will be. Good. Let's inhale. We come all the way up, release it completely, and then let's do the other side. So same thing here. Now, it may not seem like it, but this is actually sort of the next step after the Eagle pose. So eagle pose works the hip in somewhat the same way, just not as intensely. Good. Inhale, let's come all the way up and back and exhale forward fold. Inhale, half lift, and exhale, bottom of your push-up. Make your way to downward dog. All right, great work, everybody. Let's take a look at the classic side plank. So feet touch, and we inhale, we roll over. Now, if this is too much, you know what to do. You do one of the other modifications. Now, I do want to point out, I see this a lot in class. This is incorrect. Okay, again, why do people do this? Because it's easier than doing this. Okay, so again, if this is a little too much, modify. Don't cheat. 
Okay, do you understand the difference? Modify. Cheating will keep you from getting the benefits. Modifying will allow you to work toward integrity with the posture, okay? So again, this is, I'm not gonna get the same benefits, um, okay? Now again, if I wanna add, exhale, hips and hand down, inhale, lift up, right? So again, I'm stretching one side and strengthening the other side. And again, I don't really recommend more than five or so of these. Nice and slow, very intentional. And then exhale, the foot comes forward, and we inhale to warrior two. Again, I have to turn just to face the camera, okay? Take a breath, and then inhale up to stupa. Exhale to goddess. Inhale back up. Exhale, warrior two. And let's add triangle. So inhale and exhale triangle. Feel the stretch and then inhale back up and exhale warrior two. Good. Let's repeat that. Inhale up. Exhale front of the mat. Inhale straighten and exhale triangle. Now from here, I may have to back up a little bit because the gong is there. From here, I bend the front knee, look down, and with my next exhale, I transition to balancing on one leg, and this is the balancing half moon. Okay, so again, many of the same principles as the side plank and the uh, triangle pose, okay? Main difference is I'm now balancing on one leg, and this leg is lifting up. So I'm using these uh, abductor muscles here, okay? So if your leg is like down here, probably means your adductors are not very strong. So we wanna keep lifting up, that will strengthen them. Looking up again, we'll roll that shoulder back, help keep everything stacked. Good, exhale, bottom push-up. Again, I'm gonna encourage you to notice what is happening if and when you get to that point when you're like, I can't do this anymore. Instead of just believing that thought, because that's what most of us do, I can't do this anymore and we come out of it, right? Um, instead of doing that, try and pause, at least for a moment, and notice why. Why? And don't accept, because I'm tired. That's not good enough for us. That's not uh, introspective enough. We want to feel, oh, it's because there's a burning sensation here. It's because I'm hyperventilating, because I feel panicked, because I'm afraid. Okay, that's valuable information. Okay, let's switch sides. So I'm not going to turn this time. Just bring your feet together, side plank. Again, you can do any of the variations. And again, if you want, you can add in some dynamism, some dynamic movement here. Good, exhale, lunge, and then inhale to your warrior two. Take a breath, and then inhale up, stupa. Exhale, goddess. Inhale up, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten, exhale, triangle. Let's repeat that. Inhale up, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa, exhale, goddess. Inhale back up, exhale warrior two, inhale straighten, and exhale triangle. From triangle, we're pretty much ready to go to do the balancing half moon, okay? Again, most of the alignment principles will translate directly. So it's not a, it's not a big adjustment. The main thing is just transitioning to balance on that front leg. Okay, let's take a deep breath. We're gonna exhale bottom the push up. We make our way back to downward facing dog.
Beautiful work, everybody. All right. So let's do one more challenge posture. So inhale, toes, exhale, front edge of the mat. Let's inhale up. And exhale. Let's do this again. And then inhale the right ankle over. Okay. Now feel free to stay here, but if you're ready to level up, the next step, very simple, try and keep everything here the same, but just bring your hands to the ground, okay? And what you'll probably feel is an intense in the stretch in your hip. So if you have a lot of inflexibility in this muscle group, then that's probably where you're gonna feel most of it. So if you're getting a good stretch, then you just breathe here and allow those muscles to begin to relax. If you feel like you can get the hands down and you feel strong, then from there, bring the shin to the back of your arms, wrap the toes around the arms, and shift weight off of your back foot. Okay, so the next step would look like that. Now you're just balancing on your hands. Okay, and again, you might just stay there working on that. The next step is to extend this leg behind you. Now that's a big step. <laughs> okay, it might sound simple. Oh, just straighten your leg. Yeah, easier said than done. So again, if that's not something you can do today, it may take you many years or decades uh, of regular work before that becomes even an option. And for some people, it may never be an option. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Okay, it doesn't mean you're a bad yogi doesn't mean you're not strong. It doesn't mean you're not flexible. It just may mean that particular posture is not for you. However, I would not decide that in advance. Many people do that. They, they say, well, um, you know, I'm too overweight to do that, or I'm too old to do that, or I have this injury, therefore I can't do that. I wouldn't do that. I would just step by step, follow the process, don't mentally decide, and just see what your body can and can't do. Okay, stay safe. Stay safe, be careful, be mindful. But you don't need to make that decision. You just take one step after another and you either can or can't do it. Let's do the other side. Okay, so same thing. We inhale up, arms out the sides. Left leg over, so I am mirroring, okay? And then again, can I get my hands down? Can I really plant those hands? That's kind of the first step, right? Feeling like I can do that. Then the next step is shin to the back of the arms. Okay, wrap those toes and then see about balancing. All right, so again, this is much easier. What I'm doing right now, leg stays in. And then once I extend that leg, I am working much, much harder because what I've done is I've created a counter weight. So I'm, I'm being pulled backward <laughs> by that counter weight. I need a lot more strength and stability in my shoulders in order to counteract that. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on biomechanically. All right, great work, everybody. Let's go ahead and uh, come on out of that. Come on to our back. Um, let's do a little bit of unwinding. Actually, let's start with a forward fold here. So go ahead and sit down instead of coming on your back. So this is Paschimottanasana. Legs are straight. Let's inhale, arms up. Let me just exhale, forward and down. Good. We we'll inhale. We we'll come on up. Let's exhale. Those hands behind us. I want your fingers pointing toward your buttocks, and you'll point your toes in the same direction. And then on the inhale, let's lift those hips up. And if it feels okay, you let your chin go back. Good, exhale, come on down. 
Let's inhale, extend our arms, and we exhale, slowly roll back. And then let's bring those legs in. Give them a little squeeze, make some circles. And then let's do a nice spinal twist here. So we'll take the legs down to the left and we'll look to the right. And let's let go of any breathing techniques. So just the natural breath here. Good, let's inhale those knees back to center. And we'll exhale them off to the other side. Look away from the knees. Good, let's inhale those knees back to center. Grab the soles of the feet. We can do a little happy baby here. And when you're done, you can unwind into Shavasana. As usual, I recommend a five minute timer and just committing to five minutes of relative stillness and silence till the timer beeps.